Welcome to the Madness Continues podcast. This is Brendan. Thank you for coming here and checking it out, checking out the uh, the, the the interview with Ronnie Marmo today. Uh, this guy is so freaking talented, man. He is a he's a real delight. The show, I'm not a comedian. I'm Lenny Bruce. Was completely fantastic. It was really it was totally worth it. I encourage you to go check it out. I talked about it. I think uh, in the release last week, everybody really should go take a look. And um, honestly, it he was able to. You'll hear it in the discussion channel a lot that I thought was uh, truly artistic. I mean, the guy's a talent. And for not being a stand-up comic, he really kind of got a lot of, I think, what stand-up comedians deal with and I think was able to really identify and understand what what uh, Lenny Bruce himself was dealing with. So the the 90-minute show is intense. I mean, it's nonstop. And he's doing Lenny's bits. He's He's acting. He's telling the audience about Lenny's experiences. And a lot of this is just really powerful. So um, it was kind of interesting that Joe Montana was on the WTF podcast right before this. So <laughs> maybe you came here from that, uh, just searching Ronnie and the interview with him. He is a um, he's a really talented guy and very nice. Being able to spend some time with me and talk about the role and how he created it was a real treat for me. And I would encourage you, if you're in Chicago... If you're in New York, Los Angeles, wherever he takes the show on the road, I'm not a comedian. I'm Lenny Bruce. It was a great, uh, a great evening. It was really, it was, it, it really has. It's amazing that this happened, you know, 50 years ago, but it's so relevant today. Everything that he's talking about and dealing with in the show and his commitment to the part is truly inspiring. So, anyway, I know that's a lot of uh, lauding, but it really was a great show. So, thank you so much. Um, if you have the time, check out Funny Planet. Just released it. We've interviewed uh, a couple of amazing comedians so far. Tumi Marake from South Africa and Ari Eljan from Iceland. And both of them were fun times, great conversations, and uh, with funny people. So take care. And without further ado, here we go with Ronnie Marmo, star of I'm Not a Comedian, I'm Lenny Bruce. Uh, here we go. I'm just right, going to start rolling. Uh, name of the podcast is The Madness Continues. Uh, just Chicago comedy. You know, all of these. I'm a, I'm a Chicago comic doing stand-up, all this kind of stuff, man. What's it been like for you doing this, Ronnie? Uh, here or in general? Just at, I, just at all, man. Well, it's, you know, first of all, thanks for having me. It's awesome. I appreciate it. I appreciate you taking the time. No, of course. Um... What's it been like? It's been humbling. It's been <laughs> fun. It's been tragic. It's uh, basically about an hour after each show, I'm suicidal for about 90 minutes. <laughs> and then somehow I find the hope in my life again. I don't know. It's crazy. It's, it's, uh, it's been weird to watch. It was weird to watch you because I was kind of like the whole time I was like this guy. And I mean, like, I've you know, both as a stand up and then uh, some acting that I've done. I'm like, you. this guy is going through a roller coaster in front of us. <laughs> it's like a hardcore. It's like 90 minutes of therapy. You know, it's. Most nights, to be honest, I'm being kind of silly, but most nights it's it's actually cathartic and therapeutic. Every once in a while, it's hard to let go. Like, <laughs> every once in a while I'm walking home and I'm going, what's the point? Here comes the train. If I just step in front, it's all over. You know, literally, it's like the weirdest thing because you see what I go through. I oh, dude. It's torture, right? You know, the, the, nobody wants to watch acting, right? So who, who wants to see that? So I really hope that you don't spot any acting. I just kind of go through it. No, I did. It. That's what was so weird about watching the show is I was like, I feel like I'm actually fucking watching Lenny Bruce right now. <laughs> like, I love it. Well, that's that. Thank you for the compliment. And by the way, today's the first performance in 273 that a that anyone leaped out of their seat and hugged me during the curtain call. That was that was crazy. She was b crying. Her, I, it was unbelievable. It's like her name's Amanda. No, no, Amber, Amber. Her name is Amber. Yeah. I didn't know, you know, I don't know her, but she literally like leaped into my arms and was weeping. And I that was, was like, wild. And I whispered in her ear, I go, is this for you or for me? She goes, both of us. Yeah. She was like, that was crazy because we, I, you could kind of feel it from where I was sitting. I was like, she's, this woman is like going through something. She was where only two, two chairs you, over. You, you, I was with the redhead over yeah, on yeah, the okay, far cool. corner. I thought that was you. Oh nice. my God. What is this thing? It's still recording. Hold on. I'm not sure what this, there we go. Technology. Yeah, I know. We gotta invite all your viewers just to come, our listeners oh to come. Oh my gosh! We don't need the. No, it's still recording, but it's having some. All right, let's try this. Plug it in and plug it out. Uh, there we go. So much better. Perfect. Okay. For I the record, it didn't sound any different there for we me. Go. <laughs> oh, did it not? No, it was the same. Oh, for it's me, just so. mine, apparently. Yeah. All right, there we go. 
Yeah, no, it was cool. You were great in the front row. You know, that energy is essential to have. Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah, I need that because sometimes it's like an oil painting. It's yeah. Like the show feels like it's six hours long. You have know? you before? There's a lot of stuff I want to talk to you about. Uh, I think both because, you know, you're there's it's very interesting you're doing this show. First of all, it's weird that you can. I, I mean, weird in a good way. It's like it's unique that you can channel Lenny Bruce and accept that projection like from the audience because you you look like him and like yeah. you get up and you're like this is so weird you're from brooklyn he's originally yep. he's from brooklyn like it was and it's strange to it's it's almost like this parallel sort of there's almost like a resonance or something it's hard to describe it and i, I want to talk to you about that i want to talk to you about the your uh, theater 68 i oh, think great. like thank you for that i i really want to talk to you about that too and sort of your passion dedication performance which came through in the show um, one of the other things I want to talk to you about, though, just kind of before anything else is it, this was very unique to watch because this is like a one man show that you're clearly you're acting. And I, I don't want to say you're clearly acting because you're channeling Lenny Bruce, but it's like you're an actor. But Bruce is like a comedian. And it's fascinating for me as a comedian to watch because I'm like, he's you're doing you're doing stand up in the middle of the totally. sh in the show. Yeah. And I'm curious, what was that like for you as a performer to step into that world or away from doing uh how how did you handle that part of the show? Thank you. Question. Yeah, it's a great answer. question. You know, uh, first of all, I have so much respect for comics. I mean, it's no joke, you know, so I don't pretend that I'm a comic. I understand that I'd have to bomb 20 times before <laughs> I could call myself a, a comic. So I have such a respect for what you guys do. And a lot of my dearest, closest friends are comics. Yeah. So I'm always supporting them. I love them. And I'm miserable like most comics. So I think I fit right <laughs> in. You know, most of us, you know what I mean? Like I hang out with Bobcat, you know, Bob go, go yeah, play. I, yeah. hang, I hang out with Bobby like most weeks. Yeah. And like, you know, he's not going to make you laugh at lunch. I mean, these guys are all miserable. Oh, bastards. yeah. It's amazing. <laughs> uh, he's incredible. Uh, but so he's a really he, talented director now too. Oh, very. That that's kind of where he found his voice in the last decade. I, found, I saw. I met him at New York Television Festival he's a sweetheart, last man. year. Yeah, he's a good guy. Well, but you know, so the answer to your question is, I always had this respect for stand up. I have always fascinated and daydreamed about doing stand up. I'm pretty good with a microphone, uh, and I've hosted a lot of charity events. I host yeah. things. People always say, "Hey, will you come and open up and do the thing?" My friend Mike Marino, I don't know if you know Mike, he's mm -hmm. a wonderful comic, uh, and Michael Wheels Parisi, who's been an opening act for Dice Man for about 30 years. Damn. So those two guys did a show on, and, uh, and, um, and with another lady. They did a show, and I was on General Hospital at the time, and yeah. they were like, so let's get Ronnie to open for us. Well, he'll sell some tickets, you know? So That's I was, so, so I took it real <laughs> serious. I went home, and I wrote like five minutes. I wrote material, yeah. and I ran it past Wheels and Mike Marino. I said, hey, Wheels, how is it? How am I doing? And they like, you know, tighten this. Blah, blah, blah. So, so I went out on stage. We, it was like 1,000 people. It was yeah. a huge house. My first time, I hosted the show, and I literally got a big laugh on my joke, and I turn to the audience, I go, I don't have fucking time for this. <laughs> I can't get involved with this. Like, I, but I, I was addicted. You know Suddenly I mean? you get it. Yeah. Cause no, I was like, no, I actually went, oh no, oh no, oh no, I, can't, I don't have time. So like, that was as far as I, I, you know, typical me fashion. I open for a thousand people audience, yeah. you know, yeah, yeah. typical me. It's not easy, but I was like, holy crap, this is amazing. So I think I have it in me. I think I can do it. Uh, and people do think I do stand up based yeah. on the way I handle the material. Yeah. But I um I don't know, man. It's I just don't have room for it in my life. Well, I can't yeah. get involved right <laughs> I now. I thought you're a busy guy. The um I mean you just heard you. You're you've got a lot going on. You were talking to somebody in the hallway yeah, after yeah. this thing. So I should tell for the listener, Ronnie just got off stage and did a hell of a performance. It was wild to like to to watch, and you really do. I can understand why that woman was ha experiencing so much. Is that I, I even got in a couple points where I'm sitting next to you know the 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 girl I'm dating. Like we've been together for a while, and she's like she's like this is so much shit that I feel like when you know Lenny and Honey's relationship and all this and the way that you're talking about it, and like it was just so fascinating to. I mean, I don't want to give away everything for the show. People no, need to come out. No, but you can talk about it. But it was like, it just, a lot of that channeled feelings I had or she was having. And then when you talked about stand-up and you're like, Lenny's first, he's like, man, it's my first hit, like all this stuff. That's exactly how I felt, like when it hit me. And um, I think that it's funny to be a part of the Chicago community, the Chicago stand-up comedy community, what this is going on, because people have been like, what, are you going to see this show? Like, what the fuck? This guy's not a comedian, all this stuff. My friend Bobby Hill came out and saw this show, and he was like, you guys don't get it. You need to come and see the show. Like, And he's cool. the one who talked me into coming here originally. 
Nice. And like, yeah. And I was like, yeah, it's no, amazing. If you're doing comedy, you need to see the show. It's it's. it's I really think you do. Slightly insulting, you know. It's like you got to understand where this all happened. Well, yeah. You know? Well, I mean, the st- <laughs> I would say the stand up comedy community is looking for anything to push against. So no, right, they're right. <laughs> anything to spend a few bucks on. Yeah, right. I no, I know. I I understand, but they need to come see it. I mean, if I not, think if so. They're not going. It's like me not going to watch Pacino and De Niro's early work. Totally. It's, like, it's the same yeah. thing. What I, I, I I completely agree. I really think everybody needs to come check it out. Well, and thank you. To to which. I mean, which is why I was really stoked to that we could do this because I'm I'm gonna push this out hard coming up uh, this week. But Thanks, man. but um, the other thing I was gonna say is you right off the bat. I mean, and I, we don't have to dive too far into it, but you get into this bit where you're dropping, I mean, a, the N word. Oh, the racial infamous slur. N word. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it's it's crazy to watch because I I was like I'm sitting here and as a comic I'm like people in the audience are you can feel the reaction to it even silently like people are like oh I, like, oh, I feel the energy oh crazy. yeah you do especially <laughs> the first two scenes before that i did the uh the opening scene and then christ and moses yep and you guys were beautiful i mean i really kind of had you on a string and everything was going perfectly and then it's like we hit a wall you yeah know? and it's like nobody wants like there was a couple of guys who were willing to go for it and i got more than usual usually yeah. it's si- usually it's silence yeah but you know the bit is um it's a lot and it's uh and I think it's a point well taken. And I think Lenny had great intentions. And it's the most anti-racist bit. You have to listen to the whole, whole thing, thing. Which is why I wrote that little preamble to it. You know, before I do the bit, I say, well, just listen to the whole bit. But we get people, last week, a couple walked out. They got all Did mad. they really? Oh, yeah, it happens sometimes. Oh, my gosh. And, and if, I could, if I see them, if the light's hitting me a certain way, I can't see. Yeah. But I heard some commotion, and then afterwards I found out. But if I see them in character, I say, no, no, don't leave. Sit down and listen to what I'm saying to you. Yeah. You're not paying attention. Yeah. I need you to listen and open your mind. You know, I'm... I'm out of my mind. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I chase but, uh, people out the door. You know? No, but it's great because I feel like that more than anything else as a comedian watching that, I was like, I relate to this so hard mm-hmm. because uh, I, there is a there is a proclivity for audiences. And we talk about this on the pod all the time because I have, I mean, I interview lots of different people, but I interview predominantly comedians. And we talk about it all the time where it's like the the audience for some reason is, and it's exactly what Lenny would talk about. The audience would react to the exact words he's saying versus the use of them in terms of the meaning he's trying to get across. And that's like the subtext of the entire, the entire thing. And it's, it, there's, I think it's like a real artistic moment to have, you know, and think, I mean, I'm, as a performer, it blows if you're ever, <laughs> if anybody's ever leaving the theater. But it's almost like a perfect artistic moment in the sense that it's like, this is exactly, the, this is exactly oh, yeah. what this is about. Yeah, exactly. That means it's reaching people. And theater has the power to, to move people and change people and make you think at least and have a conversation. And so it's sad to me that that couple got up and left. You know who, you know who didn't, who's not offended by this bit? Is African American people? Yeah, they're not offended at all. In fact, there was a young kid. He was twenty one years old. A black kid last night. His his brother James is the house manager at yeah. the Royal George, and so I said to his brother before, I said, James, should I tell your brother about the bit? He goes, No, no, let him have the experience. And so he had the experience, and afterwards he's like, I can't believe it was incredible. Thank you. I got it. I got what Lenny was saying. I yeah. got it. And he it was perfect. And I'm like, exactly. Like they're not. You know, it's the young millennial. White people who yeah wanna, yeah Gen Z yeah, yeah. <laughs> the young millennials and Gen Z yeah, yeah they, I get they, it man they want to like yeah protect everybody and and my my friends who are African American are like we don't need your help thank you very much yeah. <laughs> we got it covered you yeah know? well that's ex- I mean without we could go on a whole tangent about that but like there's definitely something about language and and the reaction to it that I think is so fascinating about this and like. Um, you channel that really well in the show, and I think that that more than almost more than any other reason, I think that if you're if uh, and there's so, you know there's comedians who listen to this in Chicago who if it should come and see the show because I f- I feel like you in that particular that was when I was watching and thinking this guy really kind of gets this and and I'm I'm kind of amazed that you it takes so much like you're I just had a comedian on recently this guy named Tristan A Smith. Chicago comic, really funny guy. Um, he he's very vulnerable on stage, and he's willing to go to places and say things that are make people uncomfortable because they're just true and they're you know they're difficult. And watching you do that, I was thinking, how does Ronnie? And I want to ask you this question: How do you? How, that takes a certain kind of bravery. How, how where does that come from, or how do you do that? Because I think if I had to do that bit. <laughs> Like, I don't even know if I could do that bit. <laughs> you know, uh, you know what? I, I do it with the most. Uh, here's the answer. First of all, I don't want you to act like, a, you know, I don't want you to think for 
it's been smooth 273 <laughs> performances i mean yeah i lost lots of sleep there were there were nights i did half the bit and chickened out really yeah i i used to get really nervous in new york we sometimes have you know i it just i i went through a whole journey i lost a lot of sleep over this bit and then once i realized and i and i've embraced it i know f- with every fiber of my being that lenny was trying to do something positive yeah and so i and there was one thing about saying that and standing behind it. there's nothing about really coming to terms with it and i've come to terms with it now and so i'm no longer afraid to do it because mm-hmm. i do it with as much love as much humility as much uh vulnerability as i can do and i and and the point and if they just listen the point i make at the end about the young black kid wouldn't cry if you call him you know it, the point i make you know makes me feel like and just feels really honest and truthful to me because I feel that way. Yeah. And then I just added the line. It's not in the bit. I added the line, you know what word offends me? Segregation. Yeah. I heard Lenny say that somewhere else in, 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 in another context. So I, I took it and I put it in there. Yeah. And I thought, well, that really... Closes better. it out pretty... Close up, you know, that this is what offends me. Yeah. So we could all, you know, we could give power words and that word offends me. And so... I, I think I have to do it. You know, uh, I think I'm. Uh, I have a responsibility to Lenny. Yeah. And to his foundation and yeah. and every, and his fans, that like I can't put tape over his mouth again. Yeah. I can't be that guy. I'm in charge. I'm I'm the one who's doing this. I I w- wouldn't be able to live with myself. So, you know, I, I know one thing as a performer. Usually, when I'm in fear or I'm nervous or feeling vulnerable, that's when the magic happens. Mm. It's never when I'm heady or I think I know better or I think I know how it's going to go. Mm. And I'm very, very in the moment when I do that bit every mm. night because I, I try to be as gentle and graceful as I can and still tell the truth. And 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 to that end, you know, I don't even know if Lenny would do that bit today. He was so smart that he just yeah. would understand that I shouldn't do that bit. I'll find some other way to communicate that. Yeah. But he did it, and he and I'm taking people back to the '50s and '60s. And oh so yeah, we're going back in time. Yeah, it, it's it's been it's fascinating because there's been a real. I mean, I think that there's been a real interest in that time period, and it feels interesting that this this that this pl- that this is so relevant, like for right now, because there is a weird echo of like things that are going on. We've got this like quasi Nixon president, you know what I mean? But yeah. like. With this like quasi, we like strange. I mean, you know, I all these reasons I don't even have to go into. It's no, like right. It's a, and there's it's a resurgence like, of Lenny Bruce right now. Yeah, along with marvelous Mrs. Maisel, Maisel. Yeah, and also just other. I just keep hearing his name and seeing it. I'm very excited about what's going on. You know, for Lenny, you know, Lenny's sake and his family. It's just wonderful that you know. So I want to ask you. Um, I want to keep talking about this, and I'm I'm almost afraid that I'm going to ask you every question that every interview of hers ever. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, I'll find a polite way to get around it. <laughs> yeah, there you go, I'm pretty man. good at that. I'm just curious. I'm, you know, in terms of like, you know, Chicago. Chicago is like a landmark in terms of Lenny's story, so it's really appropriate that this show has done well here. I think. Yes. Um, but I'm curious what, uh, in terms of where you take this across the country. I think that there's, there's like a, you've done it in a number of places, and I'm curious what it, it being this character and doing this show in front of different audiences has been like. Thank you. You know, that's a great question. I'm happy to answer it. In Los Angeles. Whew. Yeah, good one. Good one. Good <laughs> question. In Los Angeles, it was, uh, you know, they're not really known f- as a theater community, although yeah. I'm very uh, proud of what we do in our theater company, Theater 68. And also, there are about, a, you know, a half dozen great theater companies. So there's good theater in, in L.A. I think there's watered down theater everywhere, yeah. including New York, yeah. by the way. But there's good theater everywhere. So they were ha- just happy I was doing it. So that went really well. And I was trying to find the piece, find my voice there. It really was the beginning. And so I didn't know what it was or what it could be. And it, it turned into something wonderful. When I got to New York, they're, you know, they're very savvy, maybe a little too savvy at times, where they come in going, I have to win you over. Mm. You know, Chicago, what I'm learning is, is that, and by the way, I found my voice there too in New York. And then Chicago... When I got here, I found this wonderful theater community show up and they bought the ticket, which is already flattering. Believe me, I don't take that for granted. And so they buy a ticket, they come and they're ready for an experience. Yeah. And so they walk through the door. I feel like they're rooting for you. I feel like they're open. I feel like they're ready to go. I mean, it's just a different energy. And uh, and so it has been really different in all three spots. And I was nervous because Chicago, sadly, still has a bit more of a... In, from what I've heard, and I mean, I'm not the authority on this, but uh, a more of a racial divide here. Oh yeah, it totally does. Yeah, as opposed to L.A. New York, it's way more tension. Yeah, so so that's why even my 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 awesome uh, 
uh, advertising and press group was uh, concerned about the end. They're like, "Are you sure you're going to do it?" You want <laughs> yeah, to do yeah. I said, "Yeah," because and you know, and they woke me up to the idea of that. And now I realize that. Uh, because I've had people laugh for the wrong reason during the N-word bit. And uh -huh. I stop. Yeah. It happened to me. Really? Yeah, and I said, no, no, don't laugh. You're laughing for At the, the wrong, wrong reason. Yeah. yeah I, I know why you're laughing. I don't appreciate it. I've said that. Yeah. Because I get, I get this sense like, ha, hillbilly going, ha, ha, those N-word. No, no, we're not doing that. Yeah, You're not yeah. listening. You're going to leave here smarter than you came in. You know? <laughs> so uh, and this whole audience is going to pressure you into doing it. Yeah, and I'm not afraid because if I'm going to stand behind Lenny Bruce... And, and what he was trying to say that I'm going to, I have his back. Yeah. Completely. You do some improv in the show and uh, mess with the audience, which was like, I feel, I, I feel like uh, we heard like, wha I just kept thinking he, he just, what is, is he going to sing? Is he going to dance? Like, what is this guy not going to do in the show? And you kind of do sing in the show a little bit. A little bit. I don't sing, but I, he used to sing that song. Yeah. I'm, I actually made a creative choice. Joe and I decided to make a more spoken word. Yeah. We're talking about the famous uh, All Alone bit. Yeah. Which you could see on, you could get that on YouTube, the Steve Allen. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, but I. I'll link I, that in the show notes. I yeah. sing a little bit in it, but we decided it was just more relevant to just kind of make a more spoken word. Sure. Because when Lenny did it, it was a funny bit about some girl. Yeah. But in the context of my play, I made it about honey. Oh, yeah. So it just has so much more meaning and gravitas. You know, it's so much like, so it's more, I think it means more in the play than he intended. Oh, yeah. Know? And it was, it's kind of the moment of the he the heaviness of like the, the third act starts like really coming through where you're like, oh, man, this is. <laughs> well, that's to right at the, it's funny you said it, it's right at the end of the second act. Oh, yeah. That comes right at the end of my second act. If I showed you the script, you would see exactly where it's split up in three. You'd go, oh, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. So the end of the honey stuff is right there after the car accident and all that. It's insane, you know. And uh, So, yeah. All, in fact, All Alone might be my favorite thing I do in the show. I know it's crazy to say, but I just always feel like so in in his life in that moment. Yeah. So really swept away in who he was. Like. Well, you kind of create a space that all of us kind of occupy, I think, when you do it. Like and it it uh I th so I can it doesn't sound strange to me at all I think yeah. if I I think if I was acting the play that might probably be my favorite moment it's too. It's heartbreaking to to think that you know the whole thing is really subtext because every word he's saying he's feeling the opposite. Yeah, I mean he's really <laughs> you know and he's really going through it you know and he's um uh, it's I don't know it's a great bit it's one of my favorites I mean it's like. It was one of the first things I chose to be in the show. I was like, okay, that's going to be in the show. I don't yeah. know where. It was kind of like putting it together, you know. So I think it holds up beautifully. So but talk about the crowd work section of the of the, uh, of the the show for a little bit. It seems like you were really, as every moment you, I was just watching your face. I'm like, I think he really likes this. Like, oh, that, and that's what I said about being good with a microphone. Like if yeah. you hand me a mic and say, Ronnie, we have to raise 20 grand tonight. I said, give me the mic. I'm going to take care of it. You know? Yeah. So I'm pretty good with that. It's like a thing. I don't know what that's about. I'm really good at I like hecklers. I like looking at people. I like I really play off whatever's going on. Yeah. Um, some of that is scripted that you heard today, but certainly uh, I leave room. And I and today I went off on a few tangents, you know. So uh, it's fun. It's uh, I want people to really feel like I want this show to be so overwhelming that when they leave they go, I don't know what happened. Yeah. I can't explain it. And so I went through so much and. I want to come see it again just so I could see it. And people do come. This is your second time, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Yeah, uh, and there was a lot of people here today who this was their second time. Yeah, that happens uh, we a lot. We were talking talking coming in. And like it was very fascinating to 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 hear. I mean, it doesn't surprise me. I think that part of it is that you can't It's interesting because I've been thinking about this a lot lately is what can theater do or what can stand up do? What are these things that that can you know, We live in this world where like everybody's Netflix, Disney Plus, yeah. Hulu, you know, you name it. You can sit down. You this show has to compete with thousands of other things that any of these people could be doing with any of their time and not only did they come and see it once a lot of them like myself came and saw it again and well, and that's why honestly not to get too sticky but that <laughs> that's why i leave every bit of my soul on the on the stage yeah i'm very clear that people have other things to do yeah and other choices so if people like buy a ticket and then they get in their car and they drive down here or take a train like i don't take that lightly i think it's well you were even after the show i mean every single person is coming by and like taking photos with you and like yeah. and i was thinking to myself i'm like man he is really a given 110 percent of him to this and the, uh, himself to this thing and like and i could see a lot of these people uh especially at this show i was like i was telling i was, t I was telling the girl i was with tonight i was like there's everybody's oh, so many of these people are going to be talking about this because it's all it's funny that like after i you know the after the first time i saw the show i remember thinking i get i feel like i 
I got exactly what I thought I was going to get, but I got all this stuff that I didn't expect I was going to get either. And mm. that's the stuff that a lot of these people are going to be talking about as they're going to hold on. And I'm sorry for the listener if I'm being vague, but that's kind of why you got to come and see it. Well, no, it's cool. I mean, it's uh, it's a lot. And you know what's beautiful about this show is that we go on such a ride. It's 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 hysterical. It's tragic. It's heartbreaking. It's funny. It's deep. It's all of it. And it sometimes moves between those very quickly. Yeah, no, definitely. I take you on a ride, and that's why sometimes I don't get laughs with something that I could because you're still stuck on a, a moment we had five, you know, oh, two yeah. minutes ago. Yeah. So I know that, and so that's why I think that's why I've done it 273 times is yeah. because. It's such a beast and it's so humbling that I've never nailed it yet. You know, I don't know. I hope I never get good at it, you know, Oof. because I might put it down. That's you know? wow. That's he- I'm going to have to think on what you that. I hope I never get good at it because I might have to put it down. That's amazing. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. That's how I feel about this play. There are nights it feels like it's five hours, and there are nights it feels like it's four. Oh, I minutes. thought I thought that in the middle of the show. I I, I mean I was didn't want to because we were sitting so close this uh, this time. But I remember uh, I was gonna turn turn her and be like, yeah, I he's he's got to be. This is run. He's running a marathon, like, and he's yeah. not only running it, he's sprinting parts of it. Like you know, it's interesting. Whenever I come on stage and I don't mind telling people this I start the play dead naked on the toilet I don't mind telling your listeners that yeah because it's like shocking lights up and here's this dead naked guy in the toilet some people <laughs> giggle some people don't people don't know what to do with that moment yeah. it's kind of like being the giggler at a funeral you know you see a dead body it's like ah, they yeah you just don't know what to do and so but the reason I do that and it's gonna sound pretty deep but this is my truth is like Putting that in the show the way I do it I'm basically saying to the audience I don't know if anybody gets this but I'm saying to the audience I'm here and I'm willing to be naked and vulnerable in front of you. Oh yeah, I'm 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 willing. So please come with me, and and you as well. Just open your mind and your heart and just have this experience with me. Yeah. And and I literally that's why I started that way because I want people to go, oh, okay. So this this is what's happening. Yeah. You know? And and then it, you could see it gets it gets very funny and and it's a uh, and and you know when people come in it depends where you're at in your life. Like if you saw it again tomorrow. Maybe you'd hear something new because of some situation you're in with your mom or with your girlfriend or it's just things are always popping out of the play for people. Yeah. And you could be sitting next to somebody and they're having a completely different experience. That's what's great about it. I mean, that's what the woman who was in tears basically had to give you a hug when you came out. I mean, she was having. No, she had some visceral reaction. Yeah. When I was in court, I felt her energy. That courtroom scene is crazy, right? Yeah. And I felt her and she was um, I just felt her energy. Yeah, you could tell. She, she, I felt her wanting to hug me, you know, yeah. like jump on stage, which is crazy. This, that was so amazing to happen. <laughs> I was so, <laughs> look at your face, man. You love it. <laughs> I was so taken, you yeah. know, yeah, yeah. because it was so like genuine. Like she just couldn't not. She yeah. leaped in and jumped. I got stage. a new benchmark for how I, how I can measure my stand up set is if I get a woman to try to be like, <laughs> like after no, the you show. need a woman crying. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If I can do that. Yeah. That's good. That's really, I mean, I made women cry for the wrong reasons. I'm sure before. But I have once or twice for <laughs> myself. I'm not, no, I understand. It's uh, no, that was a hell of a thing. I, I really don't know what to say about Amber. She was amazing. So um, we have. Uh, I want to. I want to shift gears. We're about twenty five minutes in, and um, I want to. Sh- sh- I know you got a ton of shit to do. No, but it's okay. I'm here, pal. I just want to make sure. All right. Waiting. Let me actually do this real quick. This obviously the most pro- professional podcast in Chicago. I had to replace the batteries on this damn thing. Uh, I love it. This is where I belong. <laughs> See, I hope you never get good at this either. <laughs> you might have to give it up. Oh my God, man! Call back. What a what a great, what a casual way to both compliment and insult somebody this, at the same time. That's my life. Are you kidding me? The other day, I was like, you know, it's you cre- you are a comic, dude. The other day, like literally, it's like I have all these great things going. on. It's my birthday. I'm getting all these calls, all this love, and then I get a root canal. <laughs> I had to go to a dentist. I'm like, and that's my life in a nutshell. It's like, it's like just when you got the thing, they knock you. Then they like, come down. Yeah, you're yeah, like, so that's okay. <laughs> things are going really well. Something's bound yeah, to happen. Exactly. Yeah. That's my life. That's so. It's like, uh, yeah, you're like, it's like a Ziggy comic or something, man. You exactly. are. You're bound to be a comic. Uh, so I was going to ask you about the Theater 68. The story of how this came together, where you had um, 68 cents your bank account. And you like get that's when you got you like first gig in L.A. Is that the, is yeah? That I got very inspired at sixty eight cents left. I uh, <laughs> I was in L.A. and I, you know to be honest, not to get too sticky or smalty, but I was like I was pretty lost in L.A. I was like crazy. I I was out there for a couple of years and I had all these really famous friends who I knew from before I got there. Yeah, and they're like, hey, come live with us. And like I had this great setup, 
but I was I was just kind of like banging around. I didn't know what I was going to do myself. And then I had sixty eight cents left, and I got this really big job, huge job. It was called Deuces Wild. Yeah, yeah. And w- and I pulled together this group of friends, and I'm like, hey, just before I got, I was like, let's uh, let's uh, let's meet on Monday nights. Let's do some scene work. Let's let's keep each other accountable. I can't afford class. None of you can afford class. Not to mention, I was in two classes that were like, you know, it was, it was like bad therapy. Oh it wasn't my god. Act- you know, it was like. <laughs> You could get you could be in the wrong hands as an actor. Yeah, it's really dangerous, you know. So uh, there are some people meant that who are meant to teach in this world, and there's some who you know got one great credit and don't want to work at the macaroni grill. <laughs> so they go, let me let me get twelve schmucks to yeah, do my class. Yeah, see it together. You know, you know what I'm saying. You gotta so, feel your feelings. But in I had, scene. oh come on. Yeah. <laughs> but then uh, you know, there's there's value in that. I, I actually have a weird theory, and I, I won't get too far into it. I've never, I don't even think talked about it publicly, but. I don't think you can. Don't, teach. don't worry. This is only twelve people. Well, no. good. That's good. I'm, I'm moving up. Um, I actually don't think you could teach acting. Yeah. I don't believe you could teach acting. Yeah. I believe that you can teach somebody if you have the right teacher who speaks your language. They can help you figure out some stuff about you and how to communicate yeah. material. But I don't think you could like you go to acting class. Go now. I know how to act. Yeah, I don't know if I believe in that. I, I'm actually, you know? I, I, t- I totally agree with you. It's so funny because I, um, I was just uh, talking with. Um, there's a guy who, um, who does a lot of stand up. Um, wrote the book called How to How to Be a Working Comedian. Um, Dave Schwenson, he's a really good comedian, and he, um, or I mean, not a comedian. Pardon me. He's a really good teacher. He teaches people comedy, but that's exactly his philosophy. He's like, I can't teach you to do stand up. I can only put you in situations in which yeah. you. Ha- you the, the the thing that you would have to do that we describe as stand up yeah. is sure that's that's what you would have to do in that situation and, and you yeah. need to learn how to do well, it well for all the actors who are listening that's i know that was a short answer and they're probably like ah this guy's an idiot but i, I and it deserves a longer well thought out answer but there's something in there that i feel really strong about because look i have enough credits to teach a class and i and whenever i teach a workshop because yeah. i'm never around one place long enough to teach a weekly class but when i do a workshop i always come at it as a director i always say I want you to see me as a director and how we're going to break down this material and hopefully I can help you with you figure out how to access your your magic I like to call it. Yeah. You know. And so but anyway, I don't know how we got there. I it's fine. This is the whole point of this thing. Oh, okay. Well, like how do you access so like let's talk about I mean this is going maybe going to go deep, but how do you access, you know, when you're do, when you're doing Lenny or something like how do you even even when you were not necessarily when you're on stage tonight, I mean like but when you're even beginning to try to access that character where where do you find that inside of you? I mean, maybe that's too big of a question it's to not too capture big. in here. It's but. not too big. I don't. I don't. This is going to sound strange to people, but I don't do a bunch of prep. And about five minutes before places, I kind of just have a couple of one liners from the play that drop me in. I do. Got that it. Drop me in, and then really, the thing I say to myself before I go on stage, and then what I do for ninety minutes is it's going to sound silly, but I basically just say. You know, I ask, I ask Lenny and my mother to 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 look out look out for me. <laughs> yeah, I ask them both to kind of help carry me, and then I and then I say to myself as I walk on stage and sit on the toilet, I say, uh, just nice and easy, nice and easy, and then when I sit there, when it's nice and easy, it goes great. When I whenever I'm full of angst or I got something going, to, and so so I can't tell you how many times during a ninety minute performance because I'm alone, I recommit. Yeah. All the time. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I'll think, oh, that scene was horrible. Meanwhile, it's no different. Doesn't look any different yeah. to the audience. But and then I was like, and there's no fucking place for you to hide, man. No. I just take a deep breath and I go nice and easy and I do that. And when I'm really lost, the two things I do for myself, and I don't mean lost with the words. I mean, I'm just not here. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I stop myself, and you'll never notice. But and I just say to myself, listen to the words, and then listen to yourself. And if I do those two things, I suddenly it opens up. I say, listen to the words I'm saying and then listen to myself and follow. You know, I believe as an actor, I believe that what separates a good actor from a great actor is someone who uh, uh, will follow their instincts. Mm. And I think if you rely on your instincts, that that's where your magic lives. You mm. know, that's what I believe is mm. like if you're willing to go, that came up for me. I got to follow it. I think it's not always going to be perfect, but I think overall that's where your magic is. So I'm constantly f- Listening to the words, then listening to myself, and then following my instincts, and it's a moment-to-moment thing. Well, you see, I really am moment-to-moment. Yeah, dude. I mean, you that know? was what I saw. All of that, uh, nice and easy. 
me recommitting. Listen to your instincts. I feel like I gotta. I hope people are listening with like a little notebook that they can like <laughs> toss all this down on. Yeah. Man, it's really good. Yeah, that's what I do, and that's really helps me because when I get too actory or I gotta, you know, dead puppies, dead puppies, or my mother in a casket. Oh my that god, that stuff doesn't make me upset. It doesn't feel real to no, me either. I just have to, it has to be nice and simple. Like I just, I don't know what it is. The less I do, yeah, the less I try to imagine. The more I'm emotionally available, it's the weirdest thing. Man, uh, I have to leave myself alone, if you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. Well, g- which means that it, all of that stuff is just in you, and you, and and the more you try to mess with it, the less of it's going to come out. The more you try to manage it, the less it's going to come no, out. I'm a mental wreck. I'm yeah. like suicidal most of the day. <laughs> so, like, literally, I just get out of the way and I let it happen. You Are know? you sure you're not a stand-up comic, man? No, I'm definitely. I'm telling you, I have all the makings of a comic. <laughs> so, really oh my do. gosh, man. Uh, I want to come open for you. Like, I'll do like two, three minutes. I can come why not? Do yeah, let's do it. Chicago. When you're going to be back here? Uh, like twenty third. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah tell and me when until I'll the come. and then for four weeks, I think, right? Until the yeah, what, February ends 16th, the sixteenth. Yeah. yeah, right now. So from the twenty third to the sixteenth, the first, uh, uh, the next day that this is going on, is that going to be the twenty fourth? The reason, the reason uh, I'm taking two weeks off is I'm going to shoot a pilot in Miami tomorrow morning. Yeah, and I'll be in, in Miami for a week and then Los Angeles for like twelve days. So I'm doing that, and so you know we didn't make a big announcement to the public. We just said Ronnie's going to shoot January fifth. And then again, yeah, the twenty fourth, and so you could still get your tickets now for the extension. I just need to go shoot this thing and come back. I don't have an understudy for yeah. the play, so <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, how could you? I don't know how you could. No, like, Joe, Joe Montana. <laughs> at one point, I I got a casting director. I was like, let me find somebody to cover me. Joe's like, nobody wants to see anybody else do it. You don't need an understudy. If you yeah. can't go on, don't go on. Joe Montana, famous for of course, the audience will know him, of course, from his groundbreaking role in Baby's Day Out. Uh, Joe Mantegna is a f- I uh, here's what's amazing I I remember watching him host SNL and one of my favorite SNL openings ever was when Joe some kid in the audience like Joe was like talking and he's like I, I keep he keeps noticing some commotion he's like I'm sorry what's going on over here and this guy's like I'm sorry you know we thought Joe Montana was hosting and I brought my son and Joe well, that, that was a bit <laughs> oh my god it was so funny no, that was a total bit no no I know it was but I mean like it was so freaking funny <laughs> yeah it's, the, the quote oh my Joe god Montana. it was so funny because he was just like that that bit where he's like and he's like talks to the kid and he's like you know it'd be really terrible if something was to happen to your dad and I remember thinking <laughs> I think I saw him do this when I was like eight or nine and I remember thinking this is so funny I know. like <laughs> Joe's a funny guy Joe he's so talented I mean you know you you've seen the play twice now like the direction is beautiful yeah and uh with a play like this when i said before like i hope i don't get good at it what i mean is like you know if you have an actor who's a little too artsy and a little too interested in his performance and you have a director who loves to make sure you see his direction this play could go really bad. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I keep it moving. I shine up, a, Joe and I shine up a few moments in the play that we find important. Yeah. But we earn those moments. It doesn't draw a lot of attention to itself at any given moment, which I think is, it, it, this is exactly what you're saying. You know what basically. I'm saying? I don't, that's why I mean, what I mean yeah. about getting good at it. Because once yeah. I start going, wow, you're really good in that scene. Like, I think I got a problem. And this, this play may not work. Yeah. Because it could end up being like just a big, uh, you know, masturbation, uh, <laughs> you know, for the wrong actor. You're sitting up there. Yeah. Playing with yourself for eighty-five minutes. Nice. It's. I want to do that play. Well, I, you know, <laughs> I, I'll, if you do, I'll, I'll go to the play. I'll buy a ticket. That's going to be my new Edinburgh show this year hey. <laughs> at the French. <laughs> Edinburgh. They they actually called, contacted me about this. Yeah. Are and you going to do it? You going to do no, it? No, because I decided that uh, I'm not going to pay. They have to give me twenty thousand to bring my show there. Oh yeah. Yeah. I mean, no offense, but like. Yep. I, I think that's you know I will do that maybe with another project. But sure. This one at this point. It's yeah. Like, oh, this is established. Two hundred seventy three shows, man. Yeah, but they yeah it's like Joe goes hey Jagoffs let them pay us <laughs> fuck that we're gonna go they're gonna call we're gonna ship us out there we go. Yeah. I wish he was my uncle. I wish he was my uncle so bad. That I could, if I could see him at every Thanksgiving and tell him what I had going him. on, you would yeah, love him. He's <laughs> he the, could he could drop. He's everything you wish he was. Believe me, he's <laughs> a really good man, and he's like my dad. He's like my dad, really. Oh my God, he's just so he's just so great. I would just, I I imagined I was like it must have been so much fun just doing rehearsing this thing and having him around for this and like it just must have been yeah, a blast. Yeah, it, it, it was, and he's funny. He sent me. He's really caught up right now in these emojis of himself. Yeah. And it's so funny. You guys see, like, he sends me these all day he's long. He's like, bet. Look at him. <laughs> he, <laughs> he sends thumbs up. Me, he sends me hearts and emojis. <laughs> and, he's, and, and he's so funny. One day I said to him, let me see where it is. I said, hey, Joe, uh, oh, yeah, he keeps sending them to me. I go, you look like an Italian Santa Claus. He does. Guy. Look at this thing. And then I, look, I sent him to my guy. <laughs> and then he starts crying. And I go, and then I go, and then he said, he did something else. And I go, you're really cracking me up with these. And then he goes, uh, he said whatever he said. 
And then I go, you know, you're real banana. And he goes, and he gives me the who me? <laughs> he's like, he's out of control with these emojis. So anyway, he loves it. He's, he's one of the great guys. I've been trying to teach him how to speak text, but he hasn't gotten it yet. Oh, my gosh. But every man. time we go, I'm like, He is okay, like dealing boy. with your dad. It's amazing. <laughs> he's so good. He's, he's such a good. I mean, hey, look, Ronnie, how do I handle this? <laughs> hey, kid, what are you doing? Kid, what are you doing? Oh, my God, man. Yeah. Um, I'm the kid, you know? That's too funny. So... Uh, so I want to get back to I want to get back to talking about uh, a little bit the um, the 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 next thing I want to talk about was Kitty's uh, foundation the Lenny Bruce thing yeah that part of this you get all these donations you're, uh, uh, to Kitty's foundation basically do you want to talk about that for a minute yeah is yeah the whole? Lenny Bruce Memorial Foundation is a very important foundation and I'm on the board and I'm very proud of that hell and, yeah man uh, yeah it's great and what you do is uh, w- what we do is we you know we every Every ticket that's sold, there's a piece that goes to the foundation. But also, uh, she has the LennyBruce.org website. And there's T-shirts, really groovy T-shirts. And we sell them at this show as well. And, uh, and pins and all this cool stuff. And 100% of the proceeds go to the foundation. And what we do is we put people through rehab who don't have insurance yep. for drugs and alcohol. So we've helped some people already. Yeah. And it really makes me happy because literally there are people in this country or in the world, I'm sure, who are not finding treatment because yeah. of money. Yeah. And so people need help yeah. desperately. And a lot of those people, you know? just like Lenny, are known as veterans. Yeah. Well, and Lenny never found recovery, and it's sad. And so so if you, uh, you're you looking for a gift for somebody, maybe you consider buying a Lenny Bruce T-shirt. They're hey, really man. cool. They got the great quotes on the back. And oh, yeah. And Lenny, I think, smoking the cigarette. Oh, it's really one of his great pictures. For a second, I looked at it, and I was like, is it is this Ronnie or Lenny? <laughs> I love it. Well, <laughs> Kitty and I are talking about doing a dual T-shirt with him, he and I. That's pretty cool. Uh, yeah, yeah. So... About the show, and I want to do. Uh, I want to do like a. Ro- I always wanted, you know. I want to be a musician, even though I can't play anything. You know, I want to yeah. be a rock star. Yeah, of still. course. So, uh, so once I wanna, again, I want to do comedian at heart. Oh, totally. <laughs> so I want to do a concert T-shirt in like all the cities we do eventually. You know, so I could be like, I got a concert T-shirt. Yeah. What is the next step? So okay, for so for this project, you have a ton of shit going on. But what for for this for this project? Uh, no to Edinburgh. They couldn't. They didn't pay. Couldn't pay. Couldn't write a check fat enough. But, uh, <laughs> but for this project, where do you see this going from? From from now, you're gonna be in Chicago through the uh, 16th. But then beyond that, where do you see this? Well, this let's project see. You going? know, I've made it very clear that if people want to keep coming to Chicago, I'll stick around till the spring. I can. Yeah. Uh, so so let's keep our fingers crossed about that. But what's happening is we sign with this company called Columbia Artists, mm-hmm. and they're they're setting up a tour right now. So that's cool. So they're calling around to every theater in this country and and they try to book us dates and and we'll go to places for a week two weeks a month um there's talk right now about san francisco which is obvious for this show boston and seattle yeah but then they're going to set up a tour and my and i don't think the actual like consecutive tour probably will start around the fall yeah so i'll probably get a few months off maybe uh we'll see how that goes and then ultimately you know i think i'd like to end up at colleges because i think Ooh, uh, this would be this would be a big controversial. Piece wow, would it? Yeah. yeah. So I, I'd like to end. That's up. that's big. Yeah, that's how this becomes big time national news. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, I could yeah. see that. Yeah. Wow, that's a great idea. Yeah, I want to do that, and I feel really strong about that. So we'll find our way, um, and then maybe maybe if it goes really really well, we'll end up uh, in Vegas someday, and we'll just sit there for ten years, <laughs> and, then I'll, and then I'll recast myself. I told Joe, I said, Joe, if I'm doing this in twenty years, pull me off the stage. He goes, If you're doing this in two years, I'm pulling you off the stage. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Joe. So I was like, yeah, like give it up, right? How did you get him, by the way? How did you get Joe? About 16 years ago, I, I sent him a letter to a P.O. box. I found the P.O. box for Joe Montana, the yeah. actor. And I had a script I wrote called West of Brooklyn. And uh, we ended up making the movie. And I wrote him this long letter saying, I'm an Italian American actor. And would you, I love your career and I appreciate you. And, and would you consider giving me a shot? You know, read my script and be in my movie, you know? And like two days later, he called me. He says, Joe Montana. I read your script. I think it's great. You want to have lunch? And I said, yeah. And we got together. And he goes, okay, I'm in. And that was that's like, amazing. Yeah, that that's was like, amazing. That was, yep. This that was, really fucking, that shit actually works. It does work. And, and, you know, people reach out to me and I try to be there for them. I mean, I really feel like I have to, pay, you know, pay it forward. I think that there's a, there's a real, there's, let me tell you this. I just want to flag this for everybody listening. It's like one of the things that's been amazing and surprising to me. I just want to say surprising slightly because we live in this world where like things seem everything seems like crushing and overwhelming and overbearing and like it's difficult to do any given thing. But like, you know, I'm, I'm launching another podcast called Funny Planet. I just like exploring stand-up comedy around the world. I've done comedy in Europe, um, Canada, the United States. Um, not outside of that. I really want to do it in Asia and Africa really badly. 
Uh, but I decided to start reaching out to these comics from like all over the world. And some of the most famous comedians from their own countries have b- decided they're sure I'll do the podcast. Sure. And, th- and that's, Sometimes and then what they said, ask. yeah, what they said is exactly what you just said was just, they're like, yeah, I'm happy to pay it forward. Like it's people have helped me and taken the time and I'm happy to do that. I think it's really cool that you just said that. Thank you. Yeah. But, that's how I feel. I, uh, you know, and I, and I try to do just that. I really do. So. Well, man, uh, I know you got people to get to. Uh, you've been very generous with your time. I think that's probably a good place to wrap up on because we're coming up on uh, on just over 45 minutes wow. man, of us chilling out. I never talk to people this long. This is amazing. <laughs> so anytime. Listen, I loved it. I, I'm grateful that you had me on and... Uh, and that you saw the show twice, and it's an open invitation to you if you ever want to see it again. Well, I just want to say, I just for everybody listening, f- first of all, thank you so much. Um, for everybody listening, uh, this I really think you should, if, if you're in Chicago, you should come and see it. Um, obviously, whenever the show goes, goes on the road, uh, you should go see it if you're listening to this from outside of Chicago, um, and, which we do have some. We have listeners outside of Chicago also, but... Uh, I say we like this is a team. I have listeners. No, you are the Chicago. board of doing. Yeah. I do. I do that all the time. I'm like, I gotta talk to my board. Wait yeah. a minute, I am the board. <laughs> That's so funny, man. The royal we. Yeah, but no. no but I, if, if you care about free speech, if you care about First Amendment, if you care about stand up comedy, if you care about the, the you know the opportunity to say and do what you want on stage, if you care about the fact that you if you make a living doing comedy, yeah, uh, or someone give is giving you any money to get to say what you want to say. You you talk about paying it forward. Come pay it forward and see Lenny Bruce. I, I just exactly like what you just said, man. Just free speech and caring about it is what's fascinating. Is we live in a time now where it's like Lenny had to deal with the state and the state interfering with all of this stuff. We live in a time that's almost even stranger in that like it's just this disembodied series of you know public judgments or something like that. That like nobody, no police are going to show up and tell you you can't do stuff. But instead, a Twitter mob is going to no the PC police. Yeah, that's exactly it. It's yeah. like it's it's a strange. I wonder what he would do in today's environment. Yeah. I mean, he would, but there's no way he would just let it pass. No, like, no. and that's what I think is so fascinating is like that watching the show and thinking like, man, he's. And then you're encountering it just like we talked about while you're on stage doing it. So it's like, the 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 play is you're talking about a character. I mean, you say it in like in the in the um, program. The, the yeah, the program book. is that it's like it's. Lenny Bruce may have passed away in 1966, but like he's still uh, with us. Like this is still all the thing. I mean, it's like we're dealing with it right now. Yeah. And I mean, no, no. So if you see the show, you could sit here and, and shake your head at most of it, going, "Oh my God, we're still doing that." I mean, the, the, you know, the, the whole thing with Christ and Moses and the, and the Puerto Rican people living in cages down in uh, at the border. Oh yeah. I mean, it's just it's just like you know, it's like. It's ridiculous. Yeah, it's madness, man. But yeah. I, I just think it's it's really cool that you're fighting the fight for it, and this is something that you've decided to produce, and like really decided to. I've been asking myself a lot lately: what what can performance, what can comedy, what can like theater, whatever do? What value does it do in the world? What things can it do in the world? And I feel like this is like we're all sitting here, and you're like you're do, you're doing some work. You know what I mean? Like this this play is like doing work. Yeah. And I would, and I really think that, uh, you know, if you're listening to this, especially if you're a comedian in Chicago, you should absolutely go and see it. So, um, just I, to, I appreciate that. And you know, I hate when actors or, or people go, uh, actors or comics say, well, it's not brain surgery what we do. <laughs> no, no, it, it is in a way because like, I know when my mother was sick and she was a young woman, she died of cancer at 53. I remember when she would listen to her favorite music or she watched her favorite TV show. She, she went away for a while. Oh yeah. Like she was, she had no pain. I watched my own eyes going, oh, she's watching All in the Family laughing her ass off. Oh, yeah. And and she was okay for that time. Yeah. So what we do is important. Yeah. It has a purpose. And so I don't like when people, like, diminish it. And same with stand-up. It's like it's important. So embrace it, and it's, and it's important. It's healing. Thanks, man. I appreciate that. Yeah. Um, so just to remind everybody, this is at the Royal George Theater on Halstead just by North and Clybourne. You can get off of the red line north of Clybourne. Right gonna, across from Steppenwolf. Yeah, man. And go to if you want to check out more and go down a little bit of a rabbit hole, go to LennyBruceOnStage.com, Lenny Bruce on stage, and that's where you get the tickets, but you also will see a bunch of videos, read all the reviews. We've gotten many love letter reviews here in Chicago. Yeah, by a lot of really, like, people who know good shit 
and are saying it's good. So I, I feel yeah. like that's it must be very satisfying, by the way, to like whenever you get that kind once, of stuff. Once man. again, I, I really can't give it too much attention. Yeah. Because I, I don't want to get good Let at it. Let it get so man, I, this, I, this is I, great. I'm grateful, but I don't uh, I don't I don't have them hanging on my wall in my apartment. You yeah. Know what I, mean? <laughs> I don't go like, I don't read myself quotes of myself. But uh, but I'm grateful, but uh, it's better than the bad ones. Although we did get one shaky one in Chicago and that was the one I posted on Facebook. Oh, that's and it, so great. And guess what happened? We started it, it actually was very serviceable because yeah. people wanted to debate that. I know so. I've been like rap I'm like trying to wrap this I've been right, trying to wrap, wrap this up, but like yeah, dude. I just wanna you have a great time. Take it easy. Thanks for sitting down with me. Anytime. Take care, Ronnie. Thanks, pal. Thanks so much for listening to the Madness Continues podcast. Once again, this is Brendan Lemon. If you liked what you listened to, please take a minute to like, to subscribe, to give us a rating. It really does mean a difference. I say us like there's more than one person doing this. Uh, It's just me, everybody. So every little bit of support you can lend would be really appreciated by me. If you want to share this podcast, it would really, really, really mean a lot to me. I hope you come back. I hope you listen and check out the other podcast I produce, Funny Planet, where we talk to different comedians from all over the world about what they're doing and how they are funny in their own cultures. You can learn a thing or two and you'll have a laugh too. Anyway, take care. Take it easy. We'll see you here next time.